Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Joni Ogg, and on behalf of the Travel Professional Community and TravelProfessionalNews.com, I want to welcome all of you to today's webinar, and I thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be with us here today. It's going to be a really great event, and our host today is Agencia Global, and joining us as well is Qatar Airways. Our first speaker today, though, is going to be Elodie Perotto. Elodie is an account manager for Qatar Airways and been, has been working for the airline for over a year now. And she is responsible for securing the leisure traffic from the USA and partnering with consolidators, VFR accounts, OTAs, and tour operators. And prior to working with the airline, she was representing the Tourism Board of Qatar in the USA for over three years, and she helped promote it as a stopover destination or a stopover option, if you will, for travelers. She also has experience working for Air France and the French Tourism Board in marketing. And today, our second speaker we've had with us before, and it's great to have him back again. We have Jimmy Stravopoulos, and I know I always say that wrong, but I tried. <laughs> He's the Director of Sales for North America at Hensei Global. He joined the company in 2016, and he has taken charge of growing their travel agent base, as well as working with travel agencies and his team to make Ahensia the most cost effective and innovative platform on the market out there. And before joining Ahensia Global, Jimmy worked as a national account manager at Samsung Electronics, working primarily on their partnership with Costco. Now, today's presentation is going to share the latest updates on the airline and their two newest gateways of San Francisco and Seattle. And Jimmy's going to share some more insight about Ahensi Global. Now, at the end of the presentations um, and, our, and our question and answer period, there are going to be two fantastic prizes awarded, but they're going to be a game that's going to be part of your chance to win the prizes. So it's gonna be super fun. And um, we'll learn more about that as we go through her presentation. I just wanna remind all of you though, that you are muted and we do welcome your questions. So you can just jot those anytime in that question area that you see on the right-hand panel of your screen there today. And when the presentations are all over with, we're gonna take questions and then we'll go into the prize game and go from there. So it's gonna be a really cool event. I'm so glad you're all here today. So I'm gonna turn the microphone now over to Elodie so she can get started. Welcome, Elodie. Hi, thank you so much. Um, welcome everyone. Thank you for attending our webinars today. Uh, thank you for taking the time to learning more about Qatar Airways and uh, Agencia. We're really happy to have you. So I'll start with uh, the presentation. We'll focus on um, giving you kind of an overview of Qatar Airways if you're not familiar with the airlines and then um, kind of going into more details into the network updates. Um, the uh, safety and cleaning procedures that we have put in place due to COVID, our commercial policy, our co-chair partners, um, and as well as of our um, trade portal that we put um, together for our trade agents to be able to uh, answer most of your questions. So I'll go ahead and give you the quick overview of Qatar Airways first, and then we'll go into more details as we go um, to, to through their presentation. So uh, why Qatar Airways? So first of all, um, Qatar Airways um, is the airline you can trust uh, throughout the pandemic. Uh, we never stopped flying. We always had um, planes uh, in the sky. The, the main reason was that we were focusing on repatriation and making sure all of our travelers were able to get back home. Um, so we really focused on repatriation. We worked with different embassies, with different um, even businesses and companies to be uh, to be able to get their passengers back to their home countries and uh, repatriate as many people as possible. So obviously we had a very um, few flights. It was a very um, strict um, core schedule of flights uh, and we had charters in place as well for repatriation. And we went down to 33 destinations during um, really the, the peak of the, of the pandemic uh, in, in May. Um, but then we are slowly uh, growing back our network and I'll share more detail with you as we go through the presentation. 
Qatar Airways has also been awarded the Airline of the Year in 2019. Uh, in 2020, um, the Skytrax uh, award has been cancelled so far. Uh, but 2019, we were the Airline of the Year and we've been awarded several um, several times, actually five times, uh, which is the we the only airline that have been awarded uh, this award five times. So I'm very proud of this, and I'll, I'll show you pictures of why we have been awarded this uh, amazing um, award. Um, we also the first Gulf carriers to join an alliance so we are part of one world and this is very important for your customers uh, in the usa uh, partnering with american airline especially i'll go into more details later um, we do have a state-of-the-art fleet uh, all of our aircraft are actually under five years old which is a, a very young fleet uh, which means that our aircraft have the latest um, technology in terms of safety, uh, in terms of comfort. So um, I'll share with you also some details on that. We are also the largest uh, operator of A350, the uh, Lattice Airbus, um, which we're very proud of. We have 53 um, Airbus uh, 350. Uh, we are well known for our luxurious uh, cabins and products. Uh, we have been awarded the best business class in 2019 and several years as well. I'll show you some pictures. And then the Hamad International Airport, which is in Doha, it's uh, our hub, has been the first airport in the Middle East to receive the five-star airport rating by Skytrax. So going into a little bit more details in terms of the award and the airline of the year, we have been awarded the world best business class, the best airline in the Middle East, the best business class seat, um, as well as uh, we now have Hamad International Airport, um, a five-star COVID-19 airport in safety rating, which is very important to us. We want to make um, sure our passengers are traveling as safely as possible, and we have done everything we could uh, to make that happen. I'll share more details as well. So in terms of product, just to give you an overview of um, what we have on board. So business class, um, our newest business class is called the Q Suite. Um, it's really a unique product uh, with the only airline that um, offer that kind of product. As you can see on the image here, we have a seat by the window. We have a door, a sliding door here that um, completely um, keeps you aware from the other passengers um, and gives you kind of a private sanctuary uh, in the air. This is really the best way of social distancing uh, on board. Uh, this is also um, amazing in terms of um, the, the amenities on board. So uh, in business class, we do have a do not disturb button uh, that you can um, that you can push to kind of limit your interaction with our crew. Of course, uh, right now it, it's very important, um, but we also have on-demand dining. So whenever um, the passenger feels like eating, uh, they just have to press a button as well. We do not uh, serve a, um, uh, a meal at a certain hour. It's whenever the passenger wants to eat, either breakfast for dinner, dinner for breakfast, whatever um, the case might be, um, we do offer this. The RQ suite also uh, converts into a quad in um, in the aisle seats. Uh, so this is a quad configuration, completely open. So we can sit four passengers um, together, facing each other. Uh, this is the case of a family, uh, but you can have also business partners, uh, whatever the case might be. Each of the passengers have a sliding door, as you can see on these pictures, to um, kind of give them that private space just for them. Um, the two TVs in the middle here are slidings as well. So if you either don't know the person um, across from you, or if you just want to have some privacy after having dinner together or something like that, you can close those uh, partition and having two suites of two people. Uh, and the other configuration would be to have the uh, panels in the, between the two passengers on the same side they go up as well, and it could be two. Uh, it could be four uh, suites of um, one person each, with a complete private space as well. Um, so this is a, a really great product. All of our seats are completely um, flat bed. Uh, if you when you're ready to go to sleep, actually when you're ready to go to sleep, the passenger um, can ask our cabin crew to uh, make the bed. So they put them. Um, 
mattress on the on the seat and then a fully convert into a full bed actually the the seats here on the um where the dad is and the daughter uh if you travel with your partner or with your kid uh this seats uh, convert into a double bed as you can see here on this picture so um this is very unique to qatar airways as well and remember this is business class uh this is not first class, uh, this is, we only have business class and economy class out of um, the USA. Um, but this is um, first in business class, I would say, because it's really an amazing product for business class. Additionally to this product, we also offer an amenity kit for business um, passengers and pajamas um, for them to be completely comfortable. Um, as you can see here, the sliding doors, so they're not disturbed by um, outside um, passengers. They really have their own uh, private space. And of course, we have our economy cabin as well. Um, economy cabin is, is really uh, a, a nice product as well. It is compared as a premium economy with other carriers. Um, our seats are a little bit wider than uh, most carriers. Um, our screens are bigger as well. And we offer everything um, in our economy um, offering. So passengers will have uh, you know, access to all of our movies, we'll have a meal included, we'll have two luggages uh, that they can check. They also have um, an amenity kit as well that we give to all of our passengers in economy too. Um, and it, it's really, as I said before, we have a um, really young fleet, so all of our aircraft are um, equipped of power outlets and USB plugs, um, and uh, it, it's really a, a great product to, to fly on. Hamad International Airport, as I said, it, it is our hub in Doha. It's the third best airport in the world, according um, to Skytrax. Sky uh, it was awarded, the it was the first in the Middle East to, to receive the five-star airport rating by Skytrax. It's a really new airport, it's really convenient to, um, to connect uh, through um, our different, uh, for two or different destinations. So uh, when you arrive, all of our flights from the USA arrive in Doha, and then onwards to other destinations, uh, our, our minimum connection time with this airport is 45 minutes, uh, which uh, makes it very easy. In normal times, uh, we do have a ton of different entertainment and uh, dining experiences at the airport, and I'm sure uh, they will be back as soon as um, COVID um, is under control. Uh, right now, um, you still have a couple of options for dining and for um, entertaining um, in the airport. Of course, the airport is following uh, really strict cleaning procedures as well. Um, we are we have been awarded the five star COVID-19 um, safety award as well. So we do have a ton of um, different procedures and um, safety measures that are being um, in place at the airport. Social distancing, uh, hand sanitizer, we have robots uh, cleaning the floor 24 hours. Uh, all of our touch points uh, for passengers are sanitized every 15 minutes. Um, we are taking temperature check at the airport for all of the arriving passengers um, and, and other um, thermal um, screenings and other measures are um, it, were introduced uh, due to COVID. In terms of networks, so as I was telling you earlier, we went down to 33 destinations at the um, peak of the pandemic in May. That was like really a core schedule of flight that we had in place for repatriation. But before, uh, before the pandemic, um, we were at 165 destinations around the world. Uh, now we are slowly going back to it. We are um, at, as of today, we are at 127 destinations around the world so um, really a, a good uh, network in place out of the us you can see um, most of our gateways are um, back and i'll give you more details uh, going through doha to the indian subcontinent southeast asia east africa south africa and of course the middle east um, are our biggest um, regions in terms of the usa so we do have um, 
so before the pandemic we had 10 gateway 10 gateways in the us including boston um, philadelphia new york washington dc miami dallas houston chicago and los angeles we also had atlanta which is not back yet but will be reintroduced uh, soon enough, uh, hopefully in March or April. But we also announced two new destinations and we're expanding our network into the USA. So we are, um, we have launched our first flight to and from San Francisco in December, December 15th. And then Seattle uh, is our next um, getaway. It's uh, really new for us and it will be on January 29th. Uh, that will be a first um, flight out of Seattle, January 29th. So we're really excited. This gave us a really uh, good coverage of the um, west coast of the US on top of um, the east coast and then um, the Midwest as well. Um, so these are all of our destinations. So once Atlanta is back, we'll be at 12 gateways in the US. Uh, right, right now, um, as soon as January uh, 29, we'll be at 11 gateways in the US. San Francisco, just a little bit more information. Uh, December 15 was our first flight. We are operating on a four times weekly, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, San Francisco to Doha, uh, San Francisco departure at 2.55 uh, p.m. Doha to San Francisco departing, departing at 8.15 a.m. Uh, we are operating the Airbus A350-900, uh, which has the Q-suite on board, and all of our passengers are um, enjoying our super Wi-Fi uh, free of charge until January 21st this month. And then a little bit more about Seattle um, launching on January 29th, as well on a four times weekly, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, we'll have Seattle departing at 5.05 p.m. and departing from Doha at 8 a.m. We'll be operating the Boeing um, 777 uh, to, to start, and then it will switch to A350. Uh, but the Q Suite is on board of the Boeing 777 as well. Um, and we have, and I'll go into more detail, but we have a frequent flyer partnership with Alaska Airlines um, that already started, and they will be joining the One World Alliance as well in March. So um, our co-chair agreement will start as well in March. And I'll be sharing all of um, this presentation with you after the, after the webinar. Uh, in terms of network as well, Africa um, is, um, is up and running. We have a lot of destinations in Africa right now, South Africa, East Africa with um, Tanzania, Kenya, uh, Rwanda, Namibia is there as well. Uh, Accra is a new destination for us. It's an um, addition to the Lagos flight. Um, and then Addis Ababa is there, um, Djibouti, and then uh, Seychelles are um, back as well. So um, really a good network in East Africa. And with the recent news of us um, being able to fly over Saudi again, um, our connection time and our flight time are, are very competitive and it's very easy to, to go to Africa through Doha. In terms of VFR markets, so where we fly to at the moment uh, in the Middle East, Iran, Iraq, Lebanon, Jordan, Kuwait, coming soon is additional um, destinations in Iran that um, will be back hopefully soon and Muscat in, um, in uh, Oman as well. In Central Asia, we are flying to Armenia and Georgia um, with um, frequent flight, flights um, available in the GDS. In terms of the Indian subcontinent, uh, India is a little bit, um, I would say, tricky at the moment. Uh, we do have uh, some flights and some availability for travel starting February 1st to those destinations like Bombay, Delhi, Hyderabad, etc. Uh, we will have more destination um, resuming uh, in India soon, in 2021, as soon as uh, India reopens completely. But uh, as of now, we do have flights to India uh, for travel February 1st onwards. Bangladesh is open. We have a double daily flight to Bangladesh to Dhaka. 
Pakistan is open, the Maldives is, is uh, pretty popular right now as a tourist destination as they accept uh, Americans to visit. Sri Lanka and Nepal as well um, have, uh, we have flights to those destinations. In terms of uh, Southeast Asia, so we do fly to all of this um, destination on the map. Um, Southeast Asia still have a lot of restrictions for Americans to go. So please, um, for all of the destination, make sure you check uh, with the embassy to have the correct information um, to who is you know, eligible to go, what are the requirements to, for entry, et cetera. But um, these, is, um, these destinations we fly to at this time. And on top of our uh, regular network, so we have, um, as I was telling you earlier, we do um, partner with One World. We are one of the carrier um, in the One World Alliance. We are the only Gulf carrier in this uh, in this alliance, which really give us um, benefits first in terms of frequent flyer benefits. So our passengers that have miles with American Airlines, for example, can use them for our flights with Qatar Airways um, and give us additional um, access to One World lounges around the world. And we have a dedicated team, a uh, One World team, making sure the connections are um, seamless and making sure our passengers are able to, to fly between the airlines within the alliance. And yes, American Airline is one of our biggest partner in the US. We fly to over um, 700 domestic cities uh, with them and additionally with JetBlue and Alaska Airlines, uh, which um, will start pretty soon as soon as we have the, the Seattle flight. So um, those three carriers, American Airlines, JetBlue and Alaska Airlines are really key partners for us in the US and um, is making us uh, give more opportunities and more options for travel to um, feeder markets and smaller cities in the US as um, these three carriers service smaller cities and uh, get our passengers to our big gateways uh, onwards to Doha with us. This is all of our partners in terms of coach shares around the world. So as you can see, we have a lot of partnerships uh, in the Americas, in the Middle East, in Africa, in Asia. I won't go into too, too much detail for all of them, but uh, this gives you an overview of um, how many airlines we partner with, which really um, gives unlimited options for uh, passengers to reach any destinations in the world. Commercial policy, and um, this is really uh, something that was uh, very important to us uh, especially now during COVID, uh, we introduced our first commercial policy back in March, um, but we have made uh, different changes over the month. And right now the commercial policy that we have in place at this time is applicable for all tickets issued up to, the, to April 30th, uh, 2021. So for all these tickets issued uh, before the end of April, passengers have the options to either um, change their travel date and their destination within the same booking class, the, um, the fare difference will be waived um, and the, the rebooking fee will be waived as well. Um, and the other option is for them to get a refund. So the, the cancellation fee, the refund fee will be waived as well. Um, so this is really a great policy that allows as much flexibility as uh, needed in, in these times um, and also helps passengers kind of make plans for the future and not, uh, not afraid of, of booking and planning their travel for 2021, knowing that if something happened or if they don't feel comfortable or if, um, you know, the situation changed or something like that, our policy will cover them and they will have either um, the options to change the travel plans or to get a full refund. We have a trade portal um, in place um, right now for all of the agents. Uh, this is a, a really um, user-friendly portal that we have online. Uh, you have the link here. And on this portal, you'll find all of the new travel alert options, the press releases, the updated ticketing guidelines and policies, the ancillary services, the special services, anything that um, is kind of um, 
uh, you know, set in stone and it's already there for you to uh, take a look. So feel free to go to this website. Uh, we do have a trade desk as well and we have an email address dedicated to the trade desk if you have any particular questions or um, specific cases that you need help with. Of course, I'm here as well and I'll share my email address um, uh, after at the end of the call, but uh, this trade portal is giving you really some of the answers. So please take a look. You don't need to log in or register to access the information. Uh, it's very easy to use. So please make sure you 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 have this uh, link saved in your in on your desktop. In terms of safety and cleaning procedures, so I just wanted to touch base because this is an important. Um, important uh, aspect of travel today. So um, we have put different um, procedures in place for COVID to make sure passengers were uh, as safe as possible while they travel with us. So um, at the airports, as I said, we have different measures in place, but on board as well, uh, where we um, give our passengers all of what they need to be flying with us safely. Um, we have, as I said, one of the youngest um, aircraft fleet in the world. So all of our aircraft are equipped with HEPA filters, which, um, you know, um, clean the air and helps circulating the air in the aircraft. It removes 99.9% .9 of all the bacteria on board. Um, obviously, we ask all of our passengers to wear a mask, um, and that uh, includes our crew as well. So all of our crew are wearing this uniform here that you can see on this picture. They're wearing the personal protective equipment, PPE, on board, which includes um, you know, a full gown, gloves, mask, um, goggles as well. So uh, they are protected and our passengers are protected. Um, we have made some adjustment to the business class meal service. Uh, it's still an on-demand service. However, in an effort to reduce contact between the crew and the passengers, we serve everything at once instead of having the appetizer and then the entree and then the dessert served like this. So if you want to know um, more information about the cleaning of the aircraft or how our crew is um, is uh, taking care of our passengers on board during COVID. We have a ton of different videos that I can send you. Feel free to um, send me an email after the call. Um, for our travelers, so we do require all of our travelers to wear a mask, obviously, um, and we are on top of that giving, and it's mandatory, for all of our passengers to wear the face shield that you can see on the picture. So we're giving the face shield at the time of boarding, all of our economy and business class passengers have to wear them. Uh, during the flights, you can, um, our business class passenger can remove it because they have, as you, you have seen um, on our previous slides, they have um, really a private space for them. They have to keep their mask on, but they can remove the face shield. In economy, you have to keep your um, mask and your face shield on board, except uh, while you're eating, of course. Um, but uh, it is mandatory and that protects you from, the mask is protecting others from you, from what you are projecting, but the face shield is protecting uh, you from others as well. On top of the face mask and the face shield, we are also giving um, a hygiene kit, which is uh, additional to our amenity kit. In the hygiene kit to all of our passengers, we are getting it includes a face mask, gloves, wipes, and hand sanitizers as well. And our latest um, technology to clean our aircraft is using the um, ultraviolet uh, cabin cleaning technology. As you can see, it's a, it's a robot. They are cleaning our aircraft on top of the regular cleaning. So this has been tested uh, during the summer and now has been applied um, to all of our aircraft. Um, this machine um, has uh, been shown to be capable of inactivating viruses. Um, and bacteria. So uh, we're using this UV light uh, to kind of disinfect and, um, and make sure everything is as safe as possible on our aircraft. And uh, we'll, this is the end of the presentation about Qatar Airways. Now I'll go and um, give the screen to Jimmy for um, Agentia and then we'll get back to you for, for the trivia after the Q&A. 
Thank you all. Thank you, Elodie. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Hope you enjoyed the holidays uh, as best as possible, given the circumstances. Um, so my name is Jimmy Stavropoulos. I'm the director of sales over at Agencia Global. And uh, for those of you who have uh, attended one of our webinars before, usually I give you the whole rundown of how to make a booking on Agencia. Uh, today, we're just going to take five to 10 minutes to show you a few cool features. Um, you know, as, as Joni mentioned at the beginning of the call, I'm responsible for ensuring that we're the most cost-effective and innovative uh, booking platform on the market for our travel agent partners to use. So um, if you like what you see in this uh, very brief presentation and uh, you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one follow-up webinar with me so that we could actually run through the tool and I'll give you an idea of all the uh, features of it, it would be my pleasure to set something up with you. So we'll be sharing my email address at the end of the presentation as well. So. Uh, I'm going to show you three quick things. One, uh, why you should keep an eye out for banners whenever you see them on Agencia Global. And then two and three being uh, some features that we've added to the platform to make your lives easier as travel agents. So number one with the banners here, I ran a quick uh, search on Seattle to Addis on which Qatar Airways is now paying a uh, drop net bonus uh, per ticket. So if ever you see a banner such as this one here, saying, you know, earn more in your next booking with Qatar Airways, feel free to click on learn more. We'll have a little pop-up kind of explaining to you what we mean by that. So here we just included a snippet of our contract. Now pay no attention to the sales period. It's actually been extended until February 28th. Um, and what do we mean by the most cost-effective uh, platform on the market for travel agents? We don't charge you any fees to sign up with us. There's no uh, booking fees, transactional fees, monthly fees. You can register for free uh, so long as you're an accredited uh, travel agent. And we share 100% of both our time of ticketing incentives received from the airlines, as well as 100% uh, of any drop net, which is why we feel very comfortable just sharing a snippet straight out of the agreement that was sent to us by the airline. So in this case here, until the 28th, uh, depending on the RBD you book, you stand to make either 30, 60 or $150. Uh, Elodie, I'm going to put you on the spot uh, and you could call me out uh, if I'm misleading the, the the audience, but are those the exact amounts that you're paying us right now? They are the exact amounts, yeah. That's right. Perfect. So um, we, we stand by that commitment. Um, if an airline, for example, is paying 5% time of ticketing commission, you will be making 5% by booking on Agencia Global and you will be getting 100% of our drop nets. So just keep an eye out for banners such as this one. Uh, they're not there just to make the screen prettier, but there's something in it for you if you click on it uh, more often than not. And then uh, when we said the one of the more innovative uh, booking platforms on the market, I've moved to our checkout page here. So it's from the same search. I did a five passenger search, um, entered a bunch of fake passenger info now just so we could get the demo going. And I'm focusing on our price breakdown section. So once you've selected your fare, you've entered the passenger info, well, it's time for you to make some money. In this case, I selected a net fare from Qatar Airways, which is why you're seeing no commission. But as you all know, you can mark up your fares. So if you do want to mark up your fare, you would just enter the amount in the agency markup field over here. If you want to know how much you're allowed to mark up your fare by, just hover over the little question mark, and it'll show you both what the airline and Agencia Global allow you to mark up by. So the 531.25 on Qatar's Airways merchant account, uh, that's pretty much a standard rule in the industry, 25% of the base fare. And then when you see maximum agency markup, 42.50, Agencia is gonna allow you to mark up by up to double the base fare. So let's go ahead and do that and say, um, we'll stay within Qatar Airways uh, policy in this case, and just enter a markup of $500. You would just put your 500 right over there. Right below, you have your breakdown per passenger. I just selected five adults for the purposes of this demo. And at the bottom, there are grand totals. So you'll see your base fare, your taxes, your subtotal, your markup, and then your grand total of 4,151. Now, all of that is being charged right down here at the Qatar Airways merchant account because um, they, they allow for that. We're below that $530. But let's say um, in your case, you've added a better service to this booking so you know maybe you've upgraded hotel rooms for them you've arranged for sightseeing tours or you know what you're just really good at your job and you feel you can make more money making this booking than what an airline will allow you to mark up by that's why we put that double the base fare markup so in this case here before you do that you see that the 4151 is being charged on their merchant account and in the agency payout section you stand to make that 500 dollars that you entered right up here 
But let's say now you did add something um, to your booking. You want to make a bit more. So you wanted to mark this up by an average of $300 per passenger. So now that 500 becomes 1500. So we switch it over to 1500. Now, as you notice, the numbers just updated base fare taxes, subtotal and all that good stuff. But at the bottom here, you'll note there's 4182 being charged on Qatar Airways merchant account and then 99781 on our merchant account on Agencia Globals. Now, the reason for that is anything over and above what an airline allows for as markup does have to go on a separate merchant account. So what I'm showing you here, I'm sure that your current consolidator offers as well the ability to place the difference onto their merchant account. Um, but the feedback I've received by doing uh, all these webinars with the tra travel professional news team uh, included agents saying that they were tired of having to explain why there's two separate charges on their customer's credit card after they presented something as a package price. So we've actually solved that problem for you. Um, and here you'll see you have your two charges for your total of 5180. In your pricing strategy section, by default, lowest price is always going to be selected. What we mean by that is if you want to charge this markup of 1500, then the lowest price you could charge here is 5180, but that would be as a function of two uh, separate charges on the customer's credit card. Whereas if you go into the little drop down menu here and select single charge, we're going to force the entirety of that fare onto our merchant account. Now, we do have a 3% service fee that applies to anything. Uh, that goes on our merchant account we're basically offsetting our costs with the bank by doing that so the 5180 now did become 5306 but now rather than having a customer ask you why they're seeing a charge from qatar and a charge from agencia global you simply have to explain to them that the charge on their card when they see agencia global and perhaps not abc travel or the name of your agency is uh your your wholesaler now if you do want to respect that price of 5180 at that point you know you would have to remove a bit from the markup so here we go if we take off hundred dollars right 5200 closer to that 5180 but all this to say that we're not going to limit the amount of money you can make now on a case-by-case -case basis we could adjust this to unlimited markup but we've never had that request since double the base fare tends to cover any agent's need but we are the only consolidator on the market that will allow you to apply that incremental markup without having to disclose how much it is thanks to a second line item so we will allow you to charge everything onto our merchant account. Now that's that 5203 we're looking at. But let's say now you've gone through the whole process with your passengers, you've agreed on the price, on the markup, uh, they've picked their tickets, they're good to go. But these are five friends traveling together and suddenly you have five people each take out their own credit card and you're stuck kind of restarting the process and booking a separate PNR for each one of them. Well, we've solved that issue for you as well. So if you scroll down to the payment section, right over here, single payment is selected by default. So what we mean is you could use one credit card to book all five passengers, they're all in the same PNR. Once you enter their info right over here, they're done. For anyone taking note, this is a fake credit card number, so no Amazon shopping sprees following the webinar, unfortunately. Um, but if you were to select multiple payment, what happens now is that you'll get a credit card slot for uh, the number of passengers that are on uh, this booking. And your passengers listed right here at the top so all you have to do is drag them into the respective credit card slots and once you've filled once you've assigned each one to a credit card slot you would just proceed right under here and you have five different tabs to enter payment info so you'd put packs number one here then packs two packs three and and so on now this doesn't have to be one card per passenger we allow you to use up to one card per passenger but let's say you know this was two couples traveling together, one of which has a kid. So you're looking at using two cards. In that case, you would just adjust the two, grab one packs from over here, drag them over there. And now you have one charge of 3121 over here and another one of 2081 over here with only two credit card tabs to fill out. Once you scroll to the bottom, agree to the booking, uh, the terms and conditions and hit book and pay, you will receive an invoice for one booking. You'll receive one itinerary for the entire group all passengers will have paid with their respective credit cards and everything is on one PNR. So in the case of a schedule change, for example, there's only one file to deal with rather than rather than five. So if any of you are ever interested in seeing what the entire uh, booking process is like on Agencia, uh, we've made it very simple. A long story short, what I tell the travel agencies that we're setting up is if you can make your booking on an OTA, you can make money making someone else's booking on Agencia. It's really as simple as booking on an OTA. And then we have 
uh, the 100% commission share, 100% drop net share, and some in, some other innovative features that I haven't shown right now. But uh, regardless of whether you're booking a published fair or a net fair, you can always apply whatever markup you want and have uh, multiple credit cards as the form of payment on a single PNR. Um, so that's pretty much it uh, on my end. So on that note, uh, thank you for uh, listening to my part of the presentation as well. And um, Joni, I'm going to pass the screen over to Elodie, but I believe this is where we would move on to some Q&A before going to the, um, the prize. Exactly. So if you can do that okay. for me and hand that over to her, I was going to do it for you, but that would be perfect. Um, and thank you, both of you. That was great. I do um, want to, if it's okay, I think I'm going to ask the questions for you, Jimmy, first, because it's more present in our mind. Um, sure. You just talked, so make it might be a little easier, and then we'll go to the questions that were from the previous. So just give me one second, get back in there, and kind of go from the bottom to the top. Okay, so sure. um, let's see. Someone says they love sure. your book. Someone loves your booking platform. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good question. Okay. I promise you, I, I, I promise you it's only gonna get better from here on out. There's more projects in the pipeline. Okay, great. And Elodie, did you want to say anything right now or do you list, can you leave the screen up and then we'll go back to the game in just a minute? Yes, exactly. While we answer um, questions, uh, Q and A's, uh, here are um, contact details for uh, me and Jimmy. I'll get back to it. But if you want to play with us, uh, please um, use your cell phone or um, another tab on your computer and start with entering www.kahoot.it uh, while we answer um, some questions. And I'll give you the code to enter and start playing the game once we're done with the Q and A. Thank you. Okay, yeah, and the game, folks, is is um, part of winning the amazing prizes, so just so you know that. All right, so let's go back to another question. Someone says, do you have a, a TA rate of a 75% discount? Um, yeah, we do have um, AD tickets um, that we offer to some of our agents' uh, partners. If you do have a request for AD tickets, um, please let me know. Um, my email address is here, um, and then we'll see if we can accommodate the request. But we, we do offer AD tickets. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, and then I did have a couple questions for Jimmy. Um, Jimmy, the commission does it does not show on the ticket. Is that correct? No, it won't show on the ticket, but as you're booking um, here, actually, I'm, I'm scrolling through my screen, but it's not showing. Uh, as you're going through the booking process, once you select the itinerary, it, there's a little commission calculator that pops up that shows you the exact amount you stand to make when booking the ticket. But our invoices, all they're going to show is your agency info at the top. That'll auto-populate based on the information you put in when you created your user profile, um, as well as the charges on each card. Now, if you do use the single charge feature, the markup that you applied will not show up anywhere as a service fee. It actually gets built into the base fare. So you could completely hide your markup. Okay, great. Someone asks, what is a drop net? So a drop net, uh, you know, there, there's many different uh, terms for this. So I, I apologize for the confusion. Consider it uh, just a bonus commission at the time of ticketing. So um, in this case here, like it applies to both net fares and published fares uh, with Qatar Airways. So if you were booking a ticket that, for example, was paying you a hundred dollar commission and there's a thirty dollar drop net on it, you're going to make one hundred and thirty dollars on that booking. OK, great. Uh, another question about your program, Jimmy, um, group options. Not yet. So that's one of the things I alluded to that's in the pipeline. We were hoping to have that up and running for 2020. but. Uh, our, our industry was disrupted slightly to say the least. So I, I'm i not a fan of making empty promises. I can't promise a timeline on that, but we are looking into it. For the time being, you could book up to nine passengers on one PNR on a Gen Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, a couple of people are asking a question. I'm just gonna throw this in here. Folks, the game pin is not up yet, but it will be in a few minutes. So don't worry, you're asking where it is, but it's not, you haven't seen it yet. You didn't miss it. Okay, so um, someone else is saying, um, and this question actually is for you, Lodi. Do you require a COVID-19 negative test prior to flying? So it depends on the destinations, um, but Qatar, it was out of the US, um, Qatar was itself is not requiring a COVID test, but however, the destination you're going to might require one. So for example, if you go to um, Pakistan, you have to have a COVID test um, 72 hours 
prior to flying so you have to check with the destination um, and we highly recommend to double check triple check uh, with the destination with the embassy with the uh, consulate uh, prior to flying because the the rules changes and it's not the same COVID test and it's not the same amount of time prior to flying requesting by all destinations. So please make sure you, you double check this information um, prior to flying. Boy, if that's not the case, right? You gotta check everything again and again and again because everything changes by the minute these days. Um, right. Someone's asking any plans for you to be flying from, and I'm gonna guess that I'm getting this right, if YYZ I believe is Toronto, is that correct or? Yep. Yes, Yay! so in, <laughs> in, in Canada, we are flying, um, we have uh, one gateway in Montreal that um, was prior to prior to COVID and is still operating today. Out of um, Toronto, we are partnering with Air Canada and we do have a code share with Air Canada, which um, is completely transparent to you, but um, you would see um, it's plated QR, it's marketed QR. Uh, we do have seats on this flight and this flight goes direct from Toronto to Doha. and onward to any of our destinations in the network. Okay, great. That answered a couple other questions that we had in here. Um, let's see. Someone said, they said that if they could clarify something, they said they flew economy and they thought there was free Wi-Fi. Can you confirm that is or isn't the case? Uh, no, it's not free Wi-Fi. I think it's, um, I believe it's $25 for the whole flight. Okay, all right. In economy, in business, in business it's free. Okay, someone said there also has a question, Luisa has a question, looking for World Expo and any connections available. Is that is that something you'd be able to answer? So unfortunately, the World Expo is in Dubai and not in Doha, so I won't have any information. Okay, about. all right, um, let's see. Someone's just noting that they did the specialist course that you had a couple of years ago. They wondered if there's any update courses. Um, not to my knowledge, but this is a good question. This is something we, we are looking into to have some of um, a, a training platform for, for, you, for you agents to be able to learn more about Qatar Airways. So stay tuned and as soon as we have something up, we'll share with you. Okay, that's great. Okay. Um, someone's just commenting for you saying thank you so much for making or giving away face shields to the passengers because it's such a nice, nice gesture that you guys are doing for everybody's safety. Uh, let's see. Someone is asking a question for you, Jimmy. Um, can you use Agency at Global to book code share or only on Qatar? Oh no, uh, we yeah. we have partnerships with basically every carrier under the sun. Um, so yeah, if you're looking to book code shares or you know any, any itinerary, basically. Right. Um, we, and we actually have agreements with uh, airlines both north and south of the u.s border so if you're located in seattle for example and you want to book flights out of vancouver or you're in wind or you're in detroit and you're looking to book out of uh you know toronto for example or buffalo out of toronto um you could actually access our point of sale canada uh commissions and net fares and book and make money that way as well so um if ever you do want to reach out my my email is on the screen um i could usually give you a nice little idea of you know, all the features available on the tool within half an hour. So feel free to reach out and we could go through all that together. Okay. Somebody has a question or just a comment. And I think that, I think we probably know the answer to this, but I'm just going to ask it just in case anybody else had this question. What rule applies, date of booking or date of flying for COVID rules? Um, for COVID rules, you mean like if, if there's a PCR test needed yeah, it's prior date to flying? Um, right. It's the departure date. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's what I figured everybody knew that, but I thought, well, if there were any other questions, we would ask that. <laughs> um, let me just see. Are there any restrictions on of transit in Qatar? No, there is no restriction. Um, we, the state of Qatar is not open at the moment to uh, international passengers, but um, going through Doha uh, and transiting through the airport, we do not, we do not request um, any PCR tests or any kind of restrictions. All passengers are welcome to transit through Doha. Okay, perfect. Well, we've got a lot of thank yous for a great webinar. So that's one good thing, uh, as well as many, <laughs> many people who have commented on um, loving the loving the way that that aircraft looks. <laughs> so, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> Anyways, that's great. I think we're probably ready at this point um, for the 
in if you want to go ahead with the game now. Great. All right. So um, if you guys have your cell phone ready with um, your page on kahoot.it, I'm going to give you the code. One second, it's loading. And then um, the winner of the trivia will win um, our um, our free um, free tickets uh, on Qatar Airways round trip in economy. And then the second uh, best uh, player will win a business kits uh, business class amenity kit along with a, a bamboo lunch lunch box and. Um, some other uh, goodies, and then the last, uh, the third best player will get a business class amenity kit as well. So, okay, please register with your real name. I see some of the name popping, this great. This is so cool. <laughs> I love this. How fun. <laughs> well, Johnny, we've been doing All our right, we have so many. the wrong way. This is awesome. <laughs> no, I know, right? I'm learning something very good here. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it. I hope, um, yeah, everyone will be able to log in. It's also kind yeah, of fun to see a lot of my friends five. on here. Hi, guys. <laughs> this is awesome. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you're on the podium at the end, um, please let me know and uh, shoot me an email so I can get the prizes for you. So you're, they're still coming in, correct? So um, right. are you going to be asking questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're asking questions, and there'll be four answers, and you'll have to choose one of the answer. Um, if uh, you know, several people will get the answer right. So once um, it's also a time um, game. So as soon you know, you you have to be fast to answer. Because, okay. So you're in uh, control. You're in control of that. So I don't. I'm the, I'm usually the one that the picks week, the winner, you know, and I'm not doing it this time. The <laughs> okay. So, so Elodie, just to confirm, so there's no confusion for anyone, if there's five people... <laughs> and actually, the, yes. I'm sorry? Yeah, so if there's five people who got all the answers correct, the winner would be the one who answered them the quickest, correct? Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, all right, so we'll be starting 62 players. This is great. Um, let's go. I hope you know the answer to most of the questions. Uh, you should, if you listen to the webinar, you should have the answers, but let's see. So what are the two newest Qatar Airways gateways in the USA? Uh, this was the whole goal of uh, this webinar. You have uh, 20 seconds to answer. So it's San Francisco and Seattle. Is it San Diego and Seattle? Is it San Francisco and Los Angeles? Or is it Los Angeles and Seattle? Make sure you respond before four seconds left. All right, it is San Francisco and Seattle. Good job. The majority of you got it right. 42 answers. Uh, great. San Francisco and Seattle, of course, um, are the, the latest um, two gateways. So Sue seems to be the first one to answer. So good job, Sue. Second question. So when is Qatar Airways launching Seattle? We're looking for the dates. So is it January 15th? Is it January 29th? Is it February 4th or March 15th? All right, eight seconds. Three seconds left. All right, good job. The majority of you got it right as well. January 29th is our launch date for Seattle. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Vanessa got the lead now. Vanessa, then Jess, and Susie. All right, third question. How many gateways Qatar Airways will be operating in the USA at the end of January? 
10 gateways, 11 gateways, 12 gateways, 13 gateways. At the end of January, how many gateways we'll have in the USA? So we'll have Seattle, as you know, um, but how many others? Three more seconds. I just want to make a reminder um, All right. for folks not to answer um, on your answer screen here on the GoToWebinar. You have to do it through the through the portal that you're utilizing with Elodie. <laughs> yes, uh, most of you got it right. 22 answered uh, 11 gateways. That's right. Uh, we were at 10 gateways prior to COVID. Then we um, added San Francisco and Seattle. However, Atlanta is not back yet, and it will be back later in March or um, or April. So in total, in March or April, we'll have 12 gateways, but at the end of January, we'll have 11 gateways in the US. All right, Vanessa is still uh, leading. Great job. Fourth question, what is the name of our business class? Is it uh, QSuite, QRoom, QBs, or QAir? That should be pretty easy, I hope. Uh, 12 seconds left. People are faster to answer, I feel like, for this question. Three seconds left. All right, <laughs> yes. Uh, all of you almost got it right. QSuite, um, it is our um, business class product. Where, um, and this is another question, the next question. Vanessa, are you crushing it? <laughs> That's a good job. Um, the next question will be related to the QSuite as well. Uh, what are the characteristics of Qatar Airways Q Suite? Is it the sliding door and the quiet configuration? Is it the flatbed and the complimentary pajamas? The on-demand dining and do not disturb button or all of the above? Five seconds left. Point it quickly, is that one, two? One second left. Of course, it's all of the above. The Q Suite has the sliding door, the quad configuration, the sliding door for the privacy, the quad configuration if you want to seat four people together, the flat bed and complimentary pajamas, the on-demand dining, and the do not disturb button. Great. Vanessa is not moving. This is good. Wow. Vanessa, Steve, and Calvin. <laughs> really good. But you can see Farah and Louisa um, starting to go up. This is good. What do we offer to our passengers due to COVID-19? Do we offer the mask, face shield, gloves, the wipes, the mask, the gloves, and the wipes, the mask and the wipes only, or nothing? This is our crew wearing the PPE on board. All right, so good job, almost everyone. We do offer everything. We do offer the face shield, which is very important, the mask. Um, if they need um, another mask, we have the another mask in the um, hygiene kit, the gloves and wipes as well. All right, Calvin, second place now. Luisa is going up as well. All right, seventh question. How long is our current commercial policy valid for? Is our commercial policy allowing full refund and um, day changes? So is it for all ticket issued until February 28, March 31st, April 30, or May 31st? Three seconds left. All right, most of you got it. It, it is until April 30th. 2021 for travel after um, April, but uh, for all tickets issued until the end of April 2021. And if you need to see the commercial policy, feel free to send me an email as well. All right. Oh no, Vanessa, you went down. <laughs> Susie is up. Farah went up as well. This is good. Good job, guys. All right, eighth question. How many destinations does Qatar Airways fly to at this time today? Do we have 103 destinations, 127 destinations, 144, or 165 destinations? All right, three seconds left. 
127. You guys are really listening to me <laughs> during this webinar because I did say it, but it was not written anywhere. So good job, all these 22 uh, people. 127 destinations we fly to at this time. Our entire network is 165 destinations. So we are slowly going back to our entire network. All right, Susie is number one now. Chris, all of a sudden, Chris and Marlies um, are on the podium now. What airlines Qatar Airways could share with in the USA? We talked about this. Is it American Airlines, JetBlue, and Alaskan Airlines? Is it American Airlines, Alaskan Airlines, and Southwest Airlines, United, Allegiant, or JetBlue, or Alaskan, JetBlue, and Southwest Airlines in the USA? Good job, most of you. Well, American Airlines, JetBlue, and Alaskan Airlines. All right, Susie is still number one, Chris and Calvin number two and three. What is Qatar Airways hub? Is it Dubai, is it Abu Dhabi, is it Riyadh, or is it Doha? This should be an easy one too, but we'll see. <laughs> 10 seconds left. If you know the destination, uh, the pictures is giving you some clues. All right, everyone got it. <laughs> Good. That was kind of an easy bonus question. Um, all right, so Susie is still up, Chris and Calvin. So now we have two more questions. Those are the bonus questions, and they um, they um, they're the same number of points, but they're a little bit harder harder because um, I did not talk about it too much uh, during the webinars. If you listen to the news, um, it's, uh, you should know the answer, but I see a little flag here up three places. Jennifer Whitty uh, is the highest climber, so <laughs> congrats, Jennifer. All right, so bonus question. Qatar Airways is the largest operator of A350. How many do we have? How many aircraft do we have? So how many A350 aircraft do we have? 45, 53, 72, 81. I briefly mentioned it during the webinar. It's a pretty hard question. Five seconds left. All right, good job. Most of you got it. 20 people got it right. 53 aircraft and we just welcomed our latest one um, last week. So this is great. All right, oh, Susie, Chris is now number one. Calvin and Susie um, are following close behind. So this next uh, question is gonna define the podium. Uh, also congrats, Jamie V, um, three in a row. Uh, he's back in the game, so good job, Jamie. All right, last question. What is the latest destination QR resumed operations to? Is it Luanda? Is it Singapore? Is it Riyadh? Is it Dubrovnik? If you followed the news uh, recently, you should know. Um, I hope you know. And this is our QC product, of course, our business class QC product. I'm going to mute my phone so you don't have to listen. All right. So is it? It is Riyadh. Um, we uh, just started flying to Riyadh. Um, earlier this week. Um, this is really exciting for us. Uh, we were not able to fly to Saudi um, uh, previously, so this is um, really good. We had, uh, we had a very successful first flight, so really good. Good job, the, all 24. So the podium is now here. Remember, the, the first place will be uh, getting um, uh, free round trip tickets uh, on Qatar Airways and economy and then the second person will get a business class main ticket, a lunch box, a notebook and other uh, goodies and then the third place will get a business class main ticket. So ta-da! <laughs> Who is gonna be? Number three is Anna M. Good job Anna! Number two is Calvin. Number one Chris, <laughs> good job to all of you. Um, runner up number four was Mary and number five was Sarah. 
uh, thank you all for playing. Please uh, uh, email me. Um, I'll share my email with all of you after the call. But thank you so much for playing. I hope you learned uh, something new about Qatar Airways and about Agencia. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. But thank you so much for your time. I know we're a little bit past the hour. So thank you so much. And I'll talk to you soon. All right, folks, I, uh, that was great fun. I think just about everybody was able to participate in that, and that was really a fun way of doing it. Thank you so much. Um, I want to just take a moment. I know we're done our, our hours up. Thank you guys for spending that time with us. Thank you for those amazingly generous prizes. Um, that's wonderful, Lodi. Thank you so much. Jimmy, you were a great speaker yet again. Um, both of you, thank you for your time. And agents, thank you guys for hanging in here with us and enjoying your uh, hour this afternoon with us. And and we look forward to seeing you next time around. Goodbye, everybody, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.